Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Hey, this is a, just a quick episode where I have a sneak peek at the Hyundai Ionic 5. They brought a couple of, of uh, pre-production units into Canada and they've asked the press to we get half an hour or so to talk about the car and interview somebody. So I'm going to do that, give you some specs, talk a little bit about the car, show it to you. I'm going to sit in it, poke around, interview somebody and ask some questions. So thanks for joining me. Let me get right into it. Hyundai is no stranger to electric vehicles, having produced well over a quarter million vehicles since 2015 after coming out with the original Ionic and the more recent Kona Electric and the Nexo fuel cell vehicle. Hyundai wants to continue with their EV trend by producing 1 million EVs by 2025 and hitting their greenhouse gas targets by being fully electrified by 2040. For 2022, Hyundai has produced the Ionic 5. And it's a sleek and sophisticated design that links past, present, and future. This progressive design represents a departure from past norms for Hyundai, exploring a new design freedom offered by the dedicated all-electric platform. Ionic 5's design language drew inspiration from Hyundai's 45 EV concept, which debuted at the 2019 International Motor Show in Germany. Ionic 5 captures the character and many details of the concept car. It has an extended 3000 mm wheelbase, which is the longest wheelbase in Hyundai's North American product lineup. Features cutting-edge parametric pixel LED lighting elements, an eye-catching V-shaped front bumper, which incorporates distinctive daytime running lamps, flush door handles provide clean surface styling and enhanced aerodynamics. Front and rear forms merge together at the doors, another example of Hyundai's parametric des dynamics design. And very strong C-pillar shape inspired by the 45 EV concept, giving the Ionic 5 a commanding presence. All right, well, welcome. I'm here joined by Mr. Steve Lamond. He's the Director of Corporate Product Strategy. Is that I get that right? Yes, that's right. Is there right. a couple, you know, titles that I'm missing? No, I think you've got it, Ken. All right, well, thank <laughs> you very much for joining me in the heat here. That is Southern Ontario as we're into the 35, 40 degrees Celsius range. It's okay. It's all, you know, the sacrifice I do for you folks to get you information on cars, <laughs> it doesn't matter. And we thank Steve for taking the time to join me. Want to just ask you some questions. There's already a lot of information out there on, on the Ionic 5. You know, it, it's, it's made its debut, all that stuff. But, you know, I'm super stoked because this is based on your first brand new platform, the eGMP, if I have that correct. Yes, it's our uh, uh, modular platform, yep. so we call it the Electric Global Modular Platform. Okay, mm -hmm. and what are some of the pluses of this? You know, I, I'm super stoked that you guys have a, a high voltage architecture. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so when you're able to uh, fully dedicate a platform to electrification, we're allowed to or able to remove some of the constraints uh, that comes with uh, a conventional IC motor. So. With this one, uh, this particular platform, we're able to really create unique proportions on the vehicle, really push the wheels at the corner. The wheelbase is mm -hmm. uh, three meters. So mm -hmm. if you think about uh, the Hyundai portfolio, our biggest vehicle, the Palisade, has even a shorter wheelbase wow. I didn't than this that, one. Yeah. So in terms of optimizing the package, the uh, dedicated platform allows us to do that. Yes. Uh, also allows us to develop a very, very interesting interior configuration, really cavernous uh, interior, lots of room. Uh, a, a flat floor as well, which uh, enables some uh, unique innovation. We have a sliding console that you're going to get to yes. see once uh, mm -hmm. you get in, into the vehicle. And of course, when you uh, dedicate uh, the architecture in and around an electrified uh, system, uh, we're able to, uh, to, to really own in on, on uh, mass reduction, so own in on, on the weight and really optimize this, which gives uh, a few side benefits. Obviously range, so mm -hmm. we're, we're, we have a very, very long range with the vehicle, but also a very engaging driving experience because uh, there's nothing better than uh, high horsepower and low mass for exactly. an engaging driving experience. Do you have any idea how much the weight, how, how, how much of the weight savings you have with this new platform versus like what's in the Kona as an example? That's a shared yeah, platform. So, so for sure, uh, when you modify an, an, yeah. an existing architecture, you have inherent mass inefficiencies. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I can tell you right now, this vehicle, as I mentioned, has got uh, a wheelbase uh, longer than a Palisade, yeah. and it actually weighs less than a Santa Fe, which wow. is a, a full class below 
uh, the uh, the Palisade. And this is the and this is with the larger battery pack, the with, 77 kilowatt correct, hour. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Obviously, every variant is yes. uh, is lighter. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you know, my viewers know I because I've I've reviewed you know the the previous um, Hyundai products, both the original Ionic which is one of the most efficient out there. Right. And of course the Kona, which again is super efficient. And these are vehicles that are, you know, have their roots in an ice V production manner that you guys electrified. Right. And, and I, I'm blown away by the job that you guys did in the efficiency because, you know, people that understand EVs know it's about, shouldn't be focused on efficiency, but that's a key metric about, right. you know, trying to decide what vehicle you want. If you can do the long ranges, do road trips, things like that. So. You know, I'm anticipating that you guys have stepped it up a notch now with this platform. Yeah, and, and uh, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. So um, there are learnings along the way too. So we established ourselves early on as a mm -hmm. leader mm -hmm. in, uh, in EVs. Uh, in fact, we're second uh, biggest in, in Canada after Tesla mm -hmm. uh, when it comes okay. to EV sales. And wow. we've applied all these learnings yeah. along the way. So it's important to, to pick those up and apply them to the de dedicated platform mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, we come up with, uh, with really an optimized package that's got the size, it's got the room, it's got the engaging driving experience, and the all important range. On, the, on our longest uh, range variant, we're going to get close to 500 kilometers, which yeah. is, is quite interesting. You know, and, and I'll be honest, Steve, I find that EPA ratings are actually kind of humbled a little bit. Yes, we know yes, real world in nice warm conditions, it's not uncommon for EVs to surpass EPA uh, uh, examples quite easily, right? No, you're so. absolutely right. So uh, obviously we go by the EPA rating, yep. uh, the European cycle uh, affords for a longer range. Mm -hmm. And like you said, in everyday driving, you're going to push beyond that limit. Exactly. You know, well, I love you know, the platform that you talked about, about pushing the, the wheels out. I mean, to me, it harkens back to Chrysler's cab forward days, because yeah. they kind of started that trend, right? Of pushing things out to the edge to give a more, a more massive, expansive interior. And that's really a selling point about this vehicle is the interior. It's amazing the amount of room that you have on a vehicle that really is, uh, you know, a, a, a compact hatchback, or right. is this classified as a midsize? Yeah, it, I mean, we like to call it a, a compact crossover yeah. mm -hmm. uh, utility vehicle. Because you said a little higher in it. Yeah, right? you said yeah. a little bit higher. It's got the the proportions mm -hmm. of uh, of an SUV. Yep. It, it rides uh, in a, in a very efficient, low manner. But mm -hmm. again, uh, it's it's able. Uh, because of the platform, uh, able to 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 provide a very very efficient uh, interior in terms of uh, cavernous, so you you get a feeling of being in yeah. a basically intermediate SUV in the vehicle, while the the overall package is much more compact. Yeah, it, you know you can definitely tell, and you know while we're talking, there's BOR yeah. running and pictures and stuff that you guys took a lot of lot of time designing and putting thought about the interior, about the controls, the menuing system, everything about the comfort level and the operability right. of the vehicle. Um, do you see this as a great vehicle for first time EVers? So we you know guys like me that understand EVs, that know about efficiencies and stuff, it's an easy entry point. But you know, what about the average Joe consumer that you know, has been driving ice V for 30 years? Yeah, so um, the world is changing, yeah. obviously, going towards electrification as the infrastructure for uh, recharging uh, is growing and, and in parts of the country growing quite uh, quickly, it's becoming more mainstream. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in terms of the vehicle and the technology, uh, we like to think of ourselves as a technology company that happens mm -hmm. to make cars as well. So yeah. we've loaded this thing with the latest and greatest. So it's, it's our best foot forward in terms of uh, technology in terms of connectivity, in terms of safety, in terms of mm -hmm. all the driving um, apparatus that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of affordability and, and really hitting the market, we have different variants. So yes. our intention is to really hit uh, the heart of the market. Mm -hmm. So the, there'll be more affordable variants with uh, a rear wheel drive configuration that will target a, a yep. certain price point all the way up to an all-wheel drive, uh, dual motor, mm -hmm. long range uh, version. So again, we're trying to appeal to the masses yeah. and we think we have a, a solution or an answer to, to all of those customers. Absolutely, and my viewers and listeners know that you know we're not at cost parity yet. Right. Hopefully in another few years, we'll start seeing the prices come down even more and, and be at that cost parity and won't need incentives. You know, right. um, uh, you know, I know I asked you about pricing and the, the Canadian pricing hasn't been announced yet. Should be happening sometime by the, the late part of the summer, August 
August or September. Uh, I am hoping that there's you know a, a one model that is under that 45k clip for the Fed rebate, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm confident that maybe something might come. We'll wait and see. Um, absolutely right now on the safety. I know you've loaded these with a full suite of safety features, um, everything from you know collision avoidance features, uh, emergency braking to lane keeping, uh, you know, I, I'm super stoked that when you guys get a driving vehicle that we, you know, take one for a drive and see how those features, those systems are. But since, you know, you've been in this vehicle and probably drove it a bit, how, is, how are those systems? You know, yeah. Relative to like Tesla or somebody like that. Yeah, so obviously it's an integration of all systems and subsystems mm -hmm. to, uh, to help uh, optimize the driving experience. We're also introducing new technology like our highway driving assist yeah. too. So it's the next version of it, which is uh, our semi-autonomous system, which also helps uh, changing lanes. So you'll engage the, uh, the turn signal and the vehicle will nice. use the cameras and, and sensors in mm -hmm. and around it to safely uh, change lane. So obviously, as, as time goes by, we, uh, we keep evolving the technology and, and uh, the safety components. But this one, uh, the, the best way to describe it is that safety is not optional. It's, it's all in. Right. Uh, on the up level, we introduce things like 360 cameras mm -hmm. as well. So we take the next step. But from the base uh, on, yep. uh, safety was a key, key uh, focus, yeah. as it is for, uh, for our entire Hyundai portfolio, by the way. Now, viewers who follow EVs know that just inherently, because of the nature of, of full electric vehicles, they have typically higher safety benefits, especially crash, crash worthiness right. with you know, more uh, uh, structural integrity and reinforced elements. The pack itself right. adds a lot of rigidity. Do you have any sense on, on where you're projecting that you'll score both for IAHS and NCAP? Yeah, so obviously we still have to, to yep. go through all of the testing, but uh, our, uh, our uh, forecasting right now is that we will hit uh, a top rating. So we, need, mm -hmm. we, need, we do need to, to confirm this. Yep. But, uh, but you're absolutely right in terms of the structure. And that's the another side benefit of a dedicated electrical architecture is the ability to not have to be compromised by where an IC engine would be located. Right. So really able to push the structure uh, mm -hmm. towards the corners of the vehicle, which gives great proportion, but at the same time also there's a, a great side benefit of safety. Absolutely, and yeah. the last thing I'm gonna ask you, Steve, is on the charging side. So one of the key metrics that I was really happy to see that you guys brought out is that convenience factor for charging, right. you know, to get people that may not be interested in EVs because they don't want to wait an hour for a charge on a road trip. And you guys are stating, uh, you know, 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so a key enabler to this is the 800 volt uh, electrical architecture, which uh, dissipates heats better, so it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically from 10% uh, to 80% charge on a, on a level three fast charger, you can get that done in 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, again, from 10% to 80, most competitors yep. will show 20 to 80, yes. 10 to 80, so very, very fast. Again, and when we talk about uh, the, the EVs becoming mainstream in the market, uh, in and along the, infra the charging infrastructure, the ability to charge your car while grabbing a coffee and keep, uh, keep going on, on your journey, we believe is, is a very, very key and integral part of making EVs much more mainstream. Can you say what you've seen from testing on the sustained maximum pull on a charge? On, on a, let's say, on a 350 kilowatt charger? Have you seen, have, do you have any ratings at all on yeah, that? Yeah, so we, ha we haven't had uh, a lot of uh, road time with the vehicles yeah. yet, so we'll, we'll be able to, uh, to have more precision in terms of, uh, of those numbers, but uh, in as much as the ranges that we're forecasting, yep. subject to uh, yep. getting EPA approval, yep. uh, we, we, uh, we knocked them out of the water. Yeah, I mean, it's going to have to be yeah. Yeah, in excess right. of 200 kilowatts for some sort to get those numbers that you're talking Co about correct. on those battery sizes. Absolutely. So that's all good for yeah. the consumer because you know we are seeing more of a proliferation of higher uh, ultra, ultra fast chargers right. throughout North America and Europe, of course, yes. and, and other countries. So And, and we're looking for more. The, the more the yes. better, obviously. Yes, <laughs> we are. Well, listen, thank you very much, Steve, for answering my questions. Welcome, I'm again. super stoked and I wish you guys the best of luck with this vehicle. We are. We can't wait to bring the car to the market. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just sitting inside the Ionic 5 here, just actually to cool off because it's uh, 40 degrees outside here and I'm sweating, folks. But it's, it's a lovely, lovely cockpit here with the 12.3 inch front screen binnacle and then next to it another 12.3 inch screen, which is all your infotainment, battery systems. Now, this is going to be running in demo mode, so it's not going to be a lot of functionality, I would imagine, on this. But you'll be able to get all kinds of granular visibility on your battery, your charge state range. This is showing 96% at 350 kilometers, but the position of the steering wheel is very nice. Telescoping and up and down, it's manual. 
with full power seats, all kinds of uh, movements here on the seats. Uh, just a very, very comfortable uh, layout and very nice looking. Now the controls, everything is very easy to reach. You've got a couple of stocks here, three stocks with your uh, shift changing, your, of course, wiper controls, and your lights and high beams and turn signals on the other with uh, steering wheel mounted controls for cruise control, menuing system, all that kind of stuff. And a dial here for additional menus and I believe volume controls on the radio. HVAC, very easy to get to. It's all haptic touch as well, feedback on these. I love the flat floor here in the front. You've got tons of space between you and the uh, front passenger. And of course the rear is all a flat floor as well. But now with regards to the back seat, wow, this is, I've got the seat where I would sit in, and this is, you saw how super easy it was, and I'm not a little guy, as you guys know, to get into this back seat. I've got tons of leg room. Now, this seat seems to be reclined, and it is, so it has reclining seats. Wow, this is nice. Um, you can get all kinds of different positions here. This is a very, very comfortable cabin. Look at the leg room, folks. I mean, I'm 5'7", so this is tons of leg room. Again, you can move the center console back, nice flat floor. Vents, easy to get to, to direct on the passengers, couple of uh, charging ports, USB ports. And I love the panoramic roof, roof that has a sunshade that goes across, especially for days like today, it's nice to have the sunshade. But this is a very comfortable backseat environment. Perfect for four people, you can definitely do five, uh, but a very nice job, fit and finish looks good on a pre-production vehicle. I think they've done quite well. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution show, a little sneak peek quick look at the, the new Hyundai Ionic 5 here that came to Canada. I'm super stoked about this vehicle, as you guys know, when I did uh, an episode a few ago of talking about it. I think this is going to be a great uh, vehicle for Hyundai. It's going to be, you know, based on their new platform, it's going to launch the uh, Ionic 6 and the Ionic 7 on the same platform. There's no pricing, as I mentioned earlier on this, but I really hope that they get at least the base model under that federal incentive amount so that it'll qualify. That will really help boost sales here in Canada, but we'll have to wait and see. So thanks for joining me watching on YouTube. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Always humbled by my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. And as always, keep your ears and eyes in the EV marketplace for stuff that's happening. It's all, oh, man, it's so exciting. I can't keep up. And until the next time I see you, everybody stay safe. Take care and bye-bye. I'll do that part again. Incoming!